your lane. Oh my. Yeah, so let me explain what's going on here. I'm in the right lane on a two lane highway, and this tr uh, truck forgot that he was pulling a fifth wheel, like literally forgot. So he thinks he's clear right now. So he comes over into my lane right there, about 12 inches away from the front of my RV. Literally had no idea he was, look at that. That's how close I came to being run off the road and hit by a fifth wheel. And um, ah, it just scares me to even watch. The only thing I could think of was to slam on the brakes and honk. So, and that's one of those things that kind of shakes you up. That's why I wanted to get off the road. Uh, I pulled off the very next rest area and the gentleman was there. That's why I talked to him and I know this for a fact. Uh, he did tell me that he had no idea how close he came. He had no idea. He thought he was just changing lanes normally. And he said, this is how he always drives. So terrifying, I guess a little bit, but then again, <laughs> see that kind of stuff. I, I don't even know what to say. You just, you have to have both hands on the steering wheel at all times and expect the incredibly unexpected all the time. Really? You have no idea? I didn't do anything wrong, man. Okay, buddy. You didn't do anything wrong. Good morning, everybody from Washington. You know, it was my original plan, desire to actually come back west following the Columbia River, you know, separating uh, northern Oregon and southern Washington, but plans changed because I wanted to get up to Montana. That's what happened. And you know what? I actually like this route just as much as following the mighty Columbia River. Look at this view. Canyons on the other side and this is Washington, believe it or not. So, yeah. Jeez. And it goes and goes and goes. I put the e-brake on the motorhome, right? <laughs> but this particular route is uh, familiar. It leads to, well, a campground I've been to before, but I've heard they've made some changes. So, well, we're going to go check it out for our seals today. Okay, okay. No wonder it's so windy around here. They keep the crop fans on in May. Yeah, that's why it's so windy around here because the crop fans are going all the time. Some spoiled crops in wine fields in Washington. <laughs> I got to get back on the road. Giving old Miranda a break. Boy, is she working hard today. Climbing and climbing and climbing gorgeous up here um, skipping I-90 I'm officially off of I-90 that's the way I usually come back we're just doing something different now and a little scenic view area I don't know you can see some uh, snowy mountain caps off in the distance but uh, Yakima Valley uh, so if you get any like local craft beers in Washington uh, you might read on the can, kind of like Rainier, it'll say made from Yakima Valley hops. Right here, this is where they do it. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, it's pretty though. So I gave Jack some lunch and just letting Miranda cool off. Uh, let me actually show you one really cool feature up here at the wheel. So I can do this while driving uh, or while just being parked. Let me start the engine up real quick here and I will show you something cool. So my display up here, yeah, I'm up to 39,000 miles now. But we'll go like this, and it says, press reset for system check, okay? Engine temp, okay. Transmission temp, okay. Oil pressure, okay. Brake fluid level, okay. 207 miles to empty. System check complete. Isn't that kind of cool? <laughs> I've never had a vehicle kind of tell me the temperatures and the brake fluid's nice too because you can't really see it it's up in the com it's hard to see when you open the hood so that that is nice seeing that the level's okay uh in the 5700 miles that i've driven this rv it's never said anything other than okay so you still want to check the gauges and everything and this rv also has analog display for transmission temperature so there's your engine temperature there's your transmission temp temperature which is nice we won't get into transmission talk right now <laughs> but let's get back on the road and look at all of Washington State we're taking with us can you see all the bugs I don't know if you can see them it's it's pretty nasty so usually I just clean a little area right in front of that camera 
cheating a little bit, but that's a lot of windshield to clean. Yeah. I'll make a little pit stop here at Walmart in Yakima because I don't know when the next one will be until I get to Olympia, Chehalis area. So stock up to do some camping and boondocking here at the Walmart and uh, then we'll hit the road. Again, I'm not trying to be dramatic or anything. Some things, many things are completely out of our control and uh, you just got to protect yourself. You got to be awake, aware, ready to respond and as I always say, record everything. In fact, Go inside Walmart here, go to the electronics section, and you can pick up a dash camera for about 30 bucks. Anything is better than nothing, guys. I don't care where you start from. Plugs into your cigarette lighter, it records automatically every time you start the engine, and you're never gonna get in one of those circumstances. Hey, ask Terry and Scott of uh, Destination Open Road. It, if there's no camera, he went into my lane. No, she went into my lane. Okay, you're both mutually at fault. Is that what you want? You want to leave life up to chance like that? You can let them run their mouth to the cops and whatever, and I've been in those situations. I will put a video up here and show you what people do, how they change their story uh, from being honest to, to lying to a cop. Just let them run their mouth and don't say anything, and at the last minute when it's your turn, say, Officer, would you like to just have my dash cam, my SD card? Watch them sweat. Watch them sweat as soon as they find out that there is an unbiased camera eye in the sky that's going to tell the true story and not embellish anything. Hear what I'm saying? Let me stock up on supplies. We'll get back on the road. It started raining a little bit, drizzling, sprinkling, nothing crazy. So I decided to pull Miranda to the side here of the Natchez River here on Highway 12. And I mean, stuff like that, that's a, that's a postcard. I mean, are you kidding me? That is the Northwest in a postcard right there. This could be a place to camp. I don't know yet. I know I'm collecting quite the... Uh, Central Washington collection of bugs here. Quite the collection. Yeah. So I'm sharing it with our hitchhiking bug friends. Wow. Wow. Darn it. If not for the road noise, this might be a good campsite. And I like to see the trash bags. That means somebody's coming through picking up trash, and I think the city might come and pick those up, or the state highway system or something. But rain clouds. Rain clouds. And unfortunately, we're going that direction, but... <laughs> All right, let's get back on the road. Woo. So a quick piece of clarification. I'm not... I'm not really skipping Snoqualmie Pass, the big one in Washington. I'm just lower. I'm more south. So I'm still just going through random passes. Like right now, this is White Pass, elevation 4,500 feet. And they have ski slopes that still have snow on them in May. I don't know. That's kind of funny to me. It's not open, but ski slopes. And this place is crazy busy in the winter time. I miss skiing. I'm not a snowboarder. I do miss skiing. It should be open. There's snow all the way up. Not good snow, but yeah. All right, White Pass, goodbye. Heading west. Well, Down. two things. I'm not gonna boondock here because I don't have any cell service. I need to stay connected for social media and YouTube and stuff like that. Secondly, to get out of here, I can't turn around. We're gonna be backing up along a, a forest road, but it is pretty. And I've been here before with Carolyn and Aja and Moo Moo. Neat little pretty lake. Let's walk down there, although I like my spot. And that's a, that's a tough call for me because in a previous life, having no cell phone service was a really good thing. Like, that was awesome. But now I have responsibilities, y'all. Gotta stay connected, gotta keep the channel clean. I gotta keep the world updated. So, yeah. Oh my, look at this. 
Look at how clear this lake is. Yeah, Yaman. Yeah, wow. Can you see the gnats all over the place here? I don't know why this place has so much more of them than that last place I was at. Man, I can breathe so much better here too. I have seasonal allergies, so late spring, early summer, I always get really, really bad allergies. Here, not so much. It helps, it helps. All right, I'll uh, eh, back the RV up over this forest road and we'll go to my second backup where I know I have cell service. Okay, okay. Do you, do you guys remember four or five years back when Washington State demolished Sherman Valley? Now, I've been coming out to Rife Lake for a long time. I thought it was pretty weird that this space was wide open. Nobody was here. No camping. Stays limited to eight hours. Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. That's fresh. That is fresh. So here we are in 2019. Rife Lake is no longer a campground. And <laughs> bear with me here. I'm actually a little emotional right now. I just... Like, why do you, why do, you do this? Aren't those screws hurting that tree? <laughs> Maybe that has something to do with it? Trash in the fire pit? I've been here for about 20 minutes before I grabbed the camera. I was trying to just... The only part of this state I like is the natural beauty of it. And it's just getting worse and worse. Every time I come back, I don't want to come back anymore. That's why I stay out for longer and longer. So just give me a break, give me a pass on this one, guys. I I'm not feeling myself, and um, I'll I'll try to I'll try to be back to normal in my next video. Right now, this one this one hurts. This one stings. This one, this one. Uh, yeah, it's just it's not that it's not fair. It's just man, man. Okay, bye.